Mr. Speaker, sir, youths in Singapore are concerned about FICA. I wish to speak about their concerns today. I will focus on two issues. One, the apparently sweeping scope of powers provided in, the, in this bill. And two, the desire for transparency in the government's administration of these powers. Zooming straight into Clause 5 of the bill, there are concerns that this clause defines activities or conduct on behalf of a foreign principal too broadly to include those, I quote, in collaboration with a foreign individual or entity. Youths are understandably worried if their everyday interactions with foreign friends will run afoul of this bill, and more precisely, whether any activity or conduct critical of the government or government policies and with any shade of foreign involvement will be hit by FICA. If one reads the proposed legislation with its plain meanings, one can quite naturally come to these conclusions and concerns. But at the same time, a foreign principal with malicious intent to interfere with our affairs can very well exploit or may already be exploiting the cover of seemingly innocuous day-to-day -day activities and conduct to achieve its insidious objectives. That is the whole point of artful interference and manipulation to operate undercover. And this could certainly involve a seemingly innocent collaboration with another party. Let's take an example. A foreign principal can collaborate on a song about vaccines. We already have a song, a collaboration, may I add, about Tai Fun, economical rights. So I think we can all agree that a song about COVID vaccines is entirely conceivable. And the song could be about the supposed superiority of certain vaccines and or the alleged risks of certain other vaccines. And if the song is catchy, if it is funny, engaging, sung with passion, it will have the potential to viral, no pun intended. And the foreign principal can very well do this in collaboration with some other party. A foreign principal can also exploit the pretext of collaboration to create memes, videos, articles, even games, essentially any number of platforms to achieve its sinister objectives. And so herein lies the central paradox that we have to deal with when we discuss our approach as a people to counter foreign interference. Because the tactics of foreign interference can be so sophisticated and so clandestine, these efforts slide themselves effortlessly into our everyday lives and can so easily masquerade as normal activities and conduct. And so to counter these, we really need to fight these forces where they are. And in other words, our laws and actions will have to operate within the realm of everyday activities and conduct in order to be effective. But this grates against our basic sensibilities. It touches a raw nerve and it causes worry, rightly so. But the basic point I am making is that ultimately we are contemplating laws like FICA, which has the potential to intersect so much with the realm of our daily lives only because the very threats that FICA seeks to counter have invited themselves into our daily lives first, whether we want it or not. And the powers in FICA are scoped on the basis of this fundamental reality. I'd like to suggest three key principles as we contemplate what is the right balance in the scope of powers. First, the enemy is without, not within. The real and only threat is insidious foreign interference from overseas, not alternative voices whether domestically or abroad. Second, to deal with this external enemy, the purpose of FICA is in fact very narrow. Even if the range of tactics, the range of tactics provided for in this bill is indeed quite broad. 
So there is a whole toolkit of directions and directives and countermeasures, but all these tactical modalities are ultimately to serve a very narrow purpose that FICA is intended for. Third, the principles of FICA are neither unique nor novel. In other words, Singapore is neither the only nor the first country moving such laws. Australia, for example, has the Foreign Influence Transparency Scheme, FITS, since 2019. Their definition of activities on behalf of a foreign principal is similarly broad. An applicable arrangement with a foreign principal under FITS could be, I quote, formal or informal, written or verbal. It could be a contract, understanding, or agreement of any kind, end quote. As illustration, if, a company, if company A and a foreign government make plans to import Australian foods into the foreign country, and company A lobbies the Australian government on export regulations, company A will be deemed to be acting on behalf of the foreign government, even if it is also acting for itself. And one can also certainly say that company A in this illustration is working in collaboration with, in its plain meaning, the foreign government. And so Australia has defined these objectives, these activities quite broadly, and the principles behind FICA are really no different. I will also note that none of the amendments that the Workers' Party has moved actually touches on Clause 5, on what constitutes activities or conduct on behalf of a foreign principle. So I am glad to see that the Workers' Party agree on the definitions in Clause 5 of the bill. Having said all these, how can we assure Singaporeans nonetheless and keep their confidence in the government's judicious administration of FICA? I have three suggestions. First and most fundamentally, we should recognise that the ultimate check and balance on government or governmental powers is not in more and more legislative guardrails, but rather in the democratic vote in our own hands. We should recognise that any government, today or future, as executive of this and other laws of the land, will be held accountable to the, to the people and by the people in Singapore. And in turn, we, the people, should have a key interest to choose suitable persons who will exercise these powers, any legislative power, discretionary power under the laws, judiciously and wisely. Notwithstanding this, secondly, I think transparency and timely disclosure by the government to the public in its executive actions under FICA will go a long way towards modulating the government's administration of the law and keep trust with the public. And in this light, I agree with the spirit of the amendments to clauses 78, 79, 81, 84, and 85 moved by Mr. Leon Pereira. I agree with the spirit of Mr. Pereira's proposed amendments. I am heartened to hear the minister reiterate his ministry's commitment made to the media last week that any designation of politically significant persons and any stepped up countermeasures for these persons and any transparency directive to publish on political matters with foreign links and any part three direction against harmful online, foreign online communications, except for technical assistance directions, will be made public. These commitments generally go further than Mr. Pereira's proposed amendments, which do not cover part three directions and do not cover some of the stepped up countermeasures for politically significant persons. Except for the public disclosure of individuals who are reporting to the government on their involvement in foreign political organisations and public disclosure of individuals and entities reporting certain arrangements to the government, these are what Mr Pereira has proposed to disclose, but I agree with the Minister that information reported by individuals and entities in general to the government should not be publicly disclosed. If the key intent of transparency is really to hold the government accountable for its actions. 
As it stands now, Clause 116 of the bill already provides that authorities may make public may make public any designation of politically significant persons and any stepped-up countermeasures for these persons and any transparency directive. And so the commitment that the Minister has expressed on transparency goes even further than Clause 116 in the bill itself, in that, number one, the Ministry will make public these actions, and two, it will include Part 3 directions against harmful foreign online communications, with one exception. To this end, I am glad to note that the Minister has also served notice in his speech just now to move an amendment clause 116 itself with the new language reading, and I quote, it must prepare, must prepare a notice informing about every part three direction except the technical assistance direction given, every designation made under part four, or every directive given under parts five or six. These proposed this proposed amendment will capture the government's definitive commitment to public disclosure and transparency under FICA. And I look forward to the passing of this amendment at the third reading in committee stage later. At this point, I'd like to seek some clarifications. One, the Ministry has, read, has mentioned a registry of foreign and political disclosures for parts 4, 5 and 6 in, in its... Um, interview with the media last week. So my question is, where will part three directions be published? Two, will the reasons for actions taken under parts three, four, five, or six also be published as much as practicable? Three, will the registry or registries be accessible online, free of charge, searchable, sortable, downloadable, so as to maximize its intended potential for public education and awareness? And four, will appeals made and decided under FICA be similarly published? So my third suggestion to better assure Singaporeans and keep their confidence in FICA is that the government needs to constantly communicate the law's intended purpose and the government's commitment to this intent. This is difficult to do as the concerns that Singaporeans may have towards the bill can be very visceral, as I noted at the start of my speech. And so to this end, can the Minister give definitive assurance in this House, once again, that the youth climate activists working with regional or international friends to advance their joint vision for climate justice has nothing to worry about as regards FICA, and can indeed look forward to continuing and growing his or her work. Can the Minister assure that the Singaporean youth working overseas and writing, posting from overseas about his or her racialized experience with previous job searches or employers in Singapore will not be deemed a vector of a hostile information campaign and thus slept with some part three direction under FICA? Can the Minister assure that indeed students, lecturers, academics in our schools and institutes of higher learning here, interacting with foreign students, discussing, exchanging views on any number of political issues, will not find themselves subject to designation as politically significant persons? Can the Minister assure that patriots, well-meaning Singaporeans who want to lend their own voices to civic discourse here, no matter how critical of the government and government policies, will not be caught by FICA simply on account of any actual or suspected interaction with a foreigner. So let me conclude. The Select Committee on Online Falsehoods heard evidence in 2018 on a troll farm cottage industry in Macedonia. Macedonia Teenagers worked in these farms and subverted the U.S. presidential elections in 2016. They might very well have zero actual interest in U.S. politics, and it is unclear if they were taking directions from other foreign state players, but it was clear that they did this to earn money through advertisements. And one teenager reportedly earned 16,000 U.S. dollars, more than 40 times the average monthly salary in Macedonia. And there were even dedicated classes to train young Macedonians in this trade. Two points to note here. One, the content created by this troll farm 
were not all fake news or falsehoods per se. So not everything can be caught by POFMA. Second point, and equally fundamental, is that the Select Committee report came out in 2018. We are debating FICA today, three years later. Indeed, it would be fair to ask, what actually took us so long? Mr. Speaker, the threat of foreign interference is real and urgent, and the broad powers provided by this bill are necessary. But Singaporeans, including youths, are concerned and I implore the government to double down on transparency commitments, as well as efforts to constantly communicate on the narrow intent of FICA, so as to assure Singaporeans while ensuring that the government has the wherewithal to effectively protect us against a common threat. And ultimately, each, each government will be held to account by Singaporeans through the exercise of our individual democratic rights. To end, I'd like to touch on Mr. Jared Giam's proposed amendments to Clause 8 on what is defined as being, quote, directed towards a political end in Singapore. Mr. Giam has proposed to remove limbs F and G of the definition in the bill, namely F on public opinion about a matter of public controversy in Singapore and G on political debate. Now, I've listened to the minister explain the philosophy behind Clause 8 and Mr. Giam's argument for the proposed omissions. Sir, so Clause 8 sets out the entire political landscape, the entire surface area that foreign threat vectors can and will operate on to subvert our affairs. I therefore like to ask Mr. Giam if he would not agree that the real effect of his proposed om omissions will not so much scope the powers of the executive to limit the potential for overreach and abuse of power, but rather the real effect will be to curtail the real powers that the executive needs to counter the real and highly complex threats that FICA is exactly in designed to counter. And would Mr. Giam not agree that his proposed omissions defang FICA and strip it of its basic effectiveness to fight foreign interference. It is a bit like saying, let's fight with one arm tied behind our backs, or maybe more, because we are worried about the power of having two arms. So lastly, I would also point out that the definition of what is directed towards a political end in Singapore in Clause 8 of FICA is already found in existing laws, such as the Public Order Act amended in 2017. In that debate in 2017, the Workers' Party had expressed no concern about the very same definition. So it is not clear to me why the Workers' Party would have a concern now about the same definition four years on. Thank you.